This video is brought to you by Keeps. What's up guys, Michael here to talk about how a simple golden ring can change a man's life forever. Wow. I'm not talking about marriage, I'm talking about the Lord of the Rings. And today in particular, we're gonna take a philosophical gander at our friends in the Shire. But before we get into it, I wanna tell you about this video sponsor, Keeps. Did you know that two out of three men will experience male pattern baldness in some form by the time they're 35? Keeps is here to help by making it easier and more affordable to prevent hair loss with their convenient subscription service. First, you get a free consultation with a licensed Keeps doctor who will choose which combination of FDA approved prescriptions and over the counter medications are right for you. Now, throughout the process, you'll be able to message your Keeps doctor 24 7 to let them know how your treatment is going. And every three months, your medication refills will automatically land on your doorstep. When it comes to hair loss, prevention is key. The treatments can typically take four to six months to start seeing results, so get started today. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps dot com slash wisecrack or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash wisecrack. Now, back to the show. Okay, I'm sure you've all seen this movie a lot of times, so I'm gonna start right at the beginning with something that I think sets things up well. Not a lot of movies where you see someone kind of defeat the bad guy. But the hearts of men are easily corrupted. Okay, so I like what is said there, that the hearts of men are easily corrupted and the ring of power has a will of its own. Now, I think the idea here is that a ring, such as the ring in the film, can reveal the true nature or character of a person. And this is a huge idea that's explored in Plato's Republic, in particular, book two of the Republic, where Socrates is talking to a couple of dudes about the nature of justice. Now, the guy Socrates is talking to, who are Plato's brothers, bring up the myth of the ring of Gyges. And this ring is similar to the ring we get in the movie, right? The idea is that you get it, you can go invisible, and you can do whatever you want. Now, in the Republic, these two argue that the ring is proof that no one really has a desire for justice. Because in the myth, this guy gets the ring, was a decent farmer, but he puts it on, and he kills the king, and he sleeps with his wife, and becomes a really bad dude. <laughs> Let's jump ahead to see what happens when Gandalf tries to get help from his old mentor, Saruman. It's crazy to me that anyone ever thought Saruman was like a good guy. He, he's clearly a very bad guy. You can just see it when you look at him. Also, it's funny that Gandalf thinks here that he's not going to close one of the doors. The hill finally can't close. It's like, come on, dude. I did not seriously think that a hobbit could contend with the will of Sauron. There are none who can. Gandalf's reaction is like when you realize we must join that like your grandparent who you love is actually kind of a racist and you're like, oh no. We must Friend, when did Saruman the wise abandon reason for madness? And here there's a distinction between reason and madness. And I think madness we can think of as a type of unreason, which is more a passion or appetite that's driving human behavior. Okay, so in the Republic, Plato maps out a tripartite account of the soul, just means three parts. And the three parts are reason, spirit, and appetite. So reason, also called um, logic or logos, represents a philosophical ruler in the Republic. And this person values justice and virtue above all else. It's the justice-focused rational faculty. Now justice occurs when spirit works in accordance with reason and not in the service of appetite. Now injustice occurs when spirit is in service of appetite, when it's pure desire driving what the individual does. Now here, Gandalf is saying to Saruman that he's abandoned the faculty of reason or logic and instead is letting that desire for power, that spirit that's focused on appetite, drive what he's doing. Now in the Republic, Plato describes reason as being the smallest part of these three elements, but it's the most important because it unifies everything else and drives it towards justice. Because without reason, without logic, without that desire towards justice, people would just do whatever the f they want 
for the sake of their own desire. I think we can see that throughout this movie, that sort of distinction between are people driven by the part of their soul that desires justice and reason, or by the part of their soul that wants honor and fame, or by the part of their soul that just wants raw power and to feel good and do whatever they want. Oh, it's the first time we see our, our fellowship. They must decide now how to end it. The time of the elves is over. My people are leaving these oh, here we go. Who will you look to when we've gone? It is in men that we must place our hope. It's really weird men. that Gandalf believes in men so much, but good, good for us. Men are weak. The race of men is failing. The blood of Numenor is all but spent. It's pride and dignity. Yeah, Elrond hates us, though. Elrond hates us. Because of men, the ring survives. I was there, Gandalf. I was there the day the strength of men failed. Okay, so here Elrond says that the strength of men failed when Isildur did not destroy the ring, which would benefit all of Middle Earth, and instead kept it for himself to give himself power. So back to Plato's account of the soul. This would be an example of logic being superseded by desire. Isildur's appetite for power was stronger than his desire for justice. And Elrond thinks this indicates a weakness in the souls of humans overall. But for Plato, it would be that Isildur hadn't really cultivated a love of justice and reason. Right? He would say that he lacks a properly philosophical spirit. And because of this, he would not be a good leader. Now this comes up in the Republic where Socrates brings up this paradox of who would be an ideal ruler, an ideal king. As the type of person who actively wants to rule, wants to be a king, um, Socrates says is the opposite of the person who should rule. And then the person who should rule is often someone who would not want to do that. So Plato's ideal ruler is a philosopher because he would be focused wholly on justice and nothing else. He has chosen exile. Okay, so obviously they're talking about Aragorn. When Elrond says he's chosen exile, this is interesting and I think it applies to what I just talked about with the account of philosopher kings in the Republic and how people that want to be leaders should not be leaders. People who don't want to be leaders are often the best suited. And here we're seeing Aragorn as someone who has actively turned his back on royalty, on leadership because he's cultivated a sense of justice and virtue over and against a desire for his own power. Gondor has no king. Gondor needs no king. I can't help here but think of Plato's Republic where the role of the king, the philosopher king in the Republic, is that sense of reason and logic. And I think when he says that Gondor, and by proxy, obviously Boromir himself, you know, needs no king, it makes sense because he's saying it might not have that sense of reason and justice and is driven by desire. And that's basically what we see when Boromir is arguing that he should have the ring to protect his people. We got ourselves a golem. There's something Frodo happened. doesn't know that they're about to become great it's friends. Golem. He's been following us for three days. Many that live deserve death. And some that die deserve life. Can you give it to them, Frodo? I think this is interesting because what's going on here is that Gandalf is acknowledging that the goodness of one's soul isn't some inherent fact, right? The desire for justice orients one's soul in a way that makes you a more just and kind and happy and virtuous person. Orienting oneself towards desire and injustice corrupts and destroys your soul. And that's what happened with Smeagol on his way to becoming Gollum. Being oriented towards straight up desire leads him away from justice, makes him just a miserable little bastard. And of course, we all know the scene. He's just like, take the ring. I don't want it. I don't want this responsibility. In place of a dark lord, and she just goes sicko queen. mode. Just Not total sicko mode. It's very scary looks evil as hell, but we got here and I passed the test. Why does she say that she's passed the test? Well, right here, she had this moment where she was tempted by the power of the ring, but because her character, because her principles were virtuous, she was able to not give in, even though by not accepting the ring, it basically means that uh, the elves have to leave Middle Earth. She knows that that's going to affect her negatively, but she refuses to let 
the ring corrupt her soul. You are a ring In this bearer, scene when she says you're a ring bearer, to bear it makes me think there's a famous episode of the show, How be. I Met Your Mother, where the character Barney says he's gotten a ring bearer. And his friends all this say, did you say bearer or bear? Because they're worried he's going to bring a bear to a wedding. And I think we can put the clip in if I'm right here. We really do have a ring bear. What? <laughs> Okay, jumping ahead a bit. They will find you. And we all know, this is a scene we all knew was coming. The ring. Where Boromir just and couldn't, beg for death couldn't hang on anymore. Oh. Is not your save by a little scary though, he's so much bigger. Give it to me! Ugh. Give it to me! No! Give me the ring! No! Dang, invisible mode. And note too, the Frodo does use the ring, but he uses it to get out of Harry's situations. Okay, so after just almost getting robbed and murdered by Boromir, um, Frodo runs up to Aragorn. I would have gone with you to the end. This is important because again, he's tempted directly with the power of the ring, but he shows that he is virtuous of character. His soul is being driven by reason and logic, which is oriented towards justice, so he's able to do the right thing and it's not even that hard for him. Compare that to Boromir, who is someone whose soul is more driven by his appetites and his desires for power, not driven by a rational faculty that's focused on justice. It's almost like Aragorn in Plato's terms would make a good king. We'll see. Okay, so unless you thought I was gonna end this video brother. without getting to Boromir's final moments. Captain. We get a little bit of redemption. My Aragorn kid. again showing. It's just a real mesh. It's not that in his falling to the temptation of the ring that it means his soul is just outright bad. He screwed up. But we see him dying with a sense of honor because he recognizes that temptation towards injustice. He recognizes that his soul was oriented towards desire and power more than it was justice, which gets back to that point once again that would be Plato's point that injustice can corrupt the soul, justice can sort of inform and enliven and enrich the soul. It's not just that you make one bad decision and you're screwed forever, although he is dead forever. That's, you know, he's, he's a human and he's dead. So he's dead now, but he went down like a G. So what are you gonna say? Okay, so there you have it. Um, by watching a great movie, The Fellowship of the Ring, we can learn a lot about the nature of the soul and the nature of justice in Plato. Specifically, I was talking a lot about stuff that's in book two of the Republic. So read Plato's Republic if you haven't already. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thanks to our patrons for all that you do to support us. Do check out our Patreon page if you haven't in a while. We have a lot of cool new features there, including a lot of extra philosophical resources if this is your sort of thing. Also check out our new stream, Wisecrack Live. It happens right here every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe, ring that bell, all those sorts of things. Um, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Later.